hundred square miles of wilderness in the heart of Africa. An animal kingdom that is home to a stunning array of wildlife. This land is slowly being returned to the wild after years of destructive hunting and farming. I'm Steve Leonard and I'm here at the Arindi Game Reserve in Namibia following the incredible story of a place that's been given back to its wild animals. This week, I meet one of the reserve's smallest but most deadly residents. This guy is going to be potentially lethal. And I go on a rescue mission for a lost lion. So he might be able to see us, that's why he might not have responded. You're basically saying he's looking at us. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That doesn't make me feel any better. to study just how a game reserve works. From the top predators to the smallest creatures, every animal in this park plays a crucial role in the natural order. What I really love about this place is the variety here. The terrains are so varied. You've got these rocky outcrops that are great for your leopards and your baboons and such. And then all this greenery, the trees, the grass, good for your elephants, your black rhino. But it's also room for the little things as well. An ecosystem is about insects, it's about reptiles, and there is so much here to see. A healthy ecosystem relies on many animal species. At Arindi's heart are its smallest inhabitants some of which come in exotic shapes and sizes. These insects provide food for all kinds of small carnivores. One of the reserve's more unusual insect predators is the outlandish-looking bat-eared fox, which uses its huge ears to locate its prey. But even for this well-adapted hunter, there's always prey that keeps one step ahead. Camouflage can be a perfect way to survive. Small or large, every animal is adapted to protect itself and survive. It's not only the big animals you've got to worry about, some of the smaller ones too can pack a pretty potent punch. And this is a great example. This is one of the local scorpions. And uh, as a rule of thumb, if they've got small pincers and a fat tail, they rely more on their venom than they do their claws. So that generally means that this guy who's got a big fat tail is going to be potentially lethal. Not to me. Generally there isn't a scorpion alive on the planet that can kill somebody my size who's fit and well, but say a child or somebody who's old and infirm, this could finish them off. If he stings me, it's just going to hurt like fury. It's going to be really, really painful. So I'll try not to threaten him in any way. At the moment, he's just looking for somewhere to burrow and hide. And I'm assuming it's him, but I can't tell. And the good thing about any venomous creature is that they don't like wasting it. It's quite hard to make and it's uh, it means that uh, they'll only use it as a last resort. We found this guy around our camp, so he could have given somebody a nasty shock if he crawled into a boot or he got into your bedding. So we've taken him out here into the, into the wild and we'll find him a more suitable place to live. I'll be sorry to see him go because I really do love scorpions, but this is a more apt place for him to be. I'm sweating a little bit because you never quite know whether they will sting you, but 
he's been very well behaved. So we'll pop him down on there and he'll just burrow away underneath this log. Be happy as Larry, hopefully. It's only a place as vast as this reserve that can support such a huge variety of animals. But some of its species require large territories in which to hunt. So hundreds of miles of electric fence keep these predators away from cattle ranches surrounding the park. At the top of the food chain are the reserve's lions. 24 in total, these powerful hunters keep the numbers of game animals like wildebeest in check. game animals and the livestock outside the fence. They're all fair game. If these cats were to get out of the reserve, the wildlife capture team would need to spring into action. Just three days ago, that's just what happened. A male lion called Goldie broke through the fence line on its northern edge, a worst case scenario for the park. We're in quite a large enclosure here looking for Goldie, a lion, one of two brothers that unfortunately got the wrong side of the wire. He was outside the reserve, so had to be captured and brought back down here. Just checking on how he's doing. If we can find him in this bush. Although Goldie's safe, his brother Shadow is now trying to escape because he thinks Goldie's outside the fence. If he does, his life's in danger. Oh, there he is over there. Goldie's been free in the reserve for two years, and it's the first time this wild lion has been kept in an enclosure and lived alone. It's really sad because Goldie, since birth, has been with Shadow, his brother. It's quite common for male lions to team up because out there in the big bad world, they've got to see off other big dominant males in the area. He doesn't know where his brother is. The last thing he remembers probably is being outside the wrong side of the fence. But if we can find Shadow and bring him back, then it's gonna be a pretty happy reunion, I think. Goldie is going to be the key to catching his brother. That night, the team come up with a plan that exploits one of the lion's most distinctive features. Its voice. On a still night, the chilling sound of a male lion can travel for several miles. A lion roars to make his presence felt and to warn off other males near his territory. But they also have a special contact call, which is as individual as a human voice. And that's how other Pride members are able to find each other. With this in mind, the team have come up with an ingenious idea to use a recording of Goldie's call to lure his brother back to the heart of the reserve. first light, the team undertake a massive search for Shadow. First task is to pick up a signal from his radio collar. 
but he's out of range. For the rest of the day, the team make an exhaustive ground search. Yeah, it's definitely become quite overgrown. There's a lot of drainage lines along here. That might be worth checking. Lost in a vast area of dense bush, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. As dusk falls, an aerial survey is a last resort. And shadows finally located right against the perimeter fence on the park's northern boundary. Now the team can put their plan into action. The Arindi Reserve is surrounded by hundreds of miles of fence to keep its predators away from the cattle outside the park. But one male lion called Shadow is trying to break out and we're on his trail. Earlier this evening, we located him and now we want to lure him away from the fence by playing him a recording of his brother's voice. We're still trying to reunite the two lion brothers that have been separated. We've got Goldie back at camp and we've got Shadow out here in the bush somewhere, currently about 400 metres that way. Now, GP has actually recorded the contact call. These are the calls that they make when they're lost, when they've lost each other, and he's recorded Goldie's and he's now going to play that to Shadow and see if we can bring Shadow into us. This has never been done before, as far as we know, with using brothers' uh, individual calls to play to each other. So we don't know what's going to happen. But if he does come steaming in, we should be in the vehicle. How are we doing? Oh, we're fine. I'm just putting the last few bits here together. Excellent. And then we'll see if he responds or even if he might want to follow us. Oh, good. Okay. So. Neither Guide GP or I know what will happen next. After half an hour, there's no response from Shadow. Then amazingly, GP picks up a signal from his radio car. Okay, he is quite close. He is he's coming moving. closer. Yes, he's moving closer. He is responding. When we started off, he was about 400 meters. He is just a little bit behind us at the moment, about 150, maybe 200 meters at max. The call seems to be working, but in the failing light, it's impossible to see Shadow. So we move in the direction of his radio signal. We know he's near to us. We just can't spot him. The scary thing with lions is they can be totally silent. He's definitely closing in on us. He's quite close. Okay. So keep our eyes peeled. So he'll definitely recognise his brother's call. He'll recognise it as his brother, do you think? Yes, of course he will. Because they are like us almost, mm -hmm. like humans, they do recognise each other's calls. I'm just amazed that he hasn't shouted back, which is making me kind of nervous, because then I'd know where he is. He's close enough to to be able to see us already, so he might be able to see us. That's why he might not have responded. He's just maybe a bit skittish so of us being in the presence. So you're basically saying he's looking at us. Yes, that's what I'm basically that saying. That doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> the sound of Goldie's call attracts scavengers. <laughs> Then suddenly, in the pitch dark, Shadow emerges from the bush. He obviously thinks that's his brother. He's still very shy of the car, so he's not coming very close. But it is working. 
It's one thing to see Shadow, but it's quite another to catch him, so we call in the reinforcements. Joined by game manager Ruin Clerter and wildlife expert Natasha Devorinin, the plan is to dart Shadow with a sedative and reunite him with Goldie. Okay, I think this is our last chance at trying to get Shadow. He's very, very nervous, so the plan is to stake out some bait, which we have done over there at the foot of a tree. If he comes close enough, Ruin's going to dart him. This is the problem with male lions. Occasionally they'll want to roam and uh, they'll end up the wrong side of the fence. And outside of this reserve is basically farmland, so the only thing that he's really going to run into is conflict with people. Now that the bait's been laid, the team move into position. He's so nervous at the vehicles that we're going to have to be very quiet and just hope that he comes close enough for Ruin to get a clear shot. Ruin carefully prepares the correct amount of sedative in the dart. He'll only get one shot. If he misses, Shadow might never get close enough again. He fires. But the dart is just inches short and Shadow disappears back towards the perimeter fence. I don't think we're going to see him now for, well, I don't know. He's obviously took off like a, a bullet after that dart nearly got him. He didn't even take the bait. I don't know if we'll ever get close to him now. I don't know what they're going to do, but they're going to have to come up with a different plan because this isn't going to work. Even though he is radio collared, he's going to be very difficult to get back. single one to keep the growing number of game animals under control. For Natasha and the team, the search will go on. But four weeks later, Shadow's still at large. What's happened is we've lost a bit of trust with the one male. It's just the way circumstances have gone and it's not going to be very easy to just pop up there in the next day or so and, and be able to dart him and reunite him with his brother, which is what we were all hoping was going to happen very, very quickly. We've gotten to a point now where we have to build his trust again. It's going to take potentially the next few weeks, if not the next few months, for us to rebuild that relationship with that male line in order to reunite him with his brother. It's not going to happen as we thought, but it's going to happen. Goldie will remain in the small enclosure for the time being, and if his brother continues to evade capture, he will have to learn to survive on his own. Although Goldie and Shadow being separated is a tragedy, in the south of the park, one lion pride is flourishing. With plenty of game to hunt, 
this group of lions are able to support and sustain three healthy cubs. But their mother has her work cut out to keep these youngsters under control. Play fights are feisty affairs and are crucial to create a well-bonded family. No matter how boisterous her cubs get, she puts up with their play. Until it's time to show them who's boss. of the future and a sign that the park is in good health. Hopefully there'll be another chance to reunite Shadow with his brother. And once again they'll roam free with the rest of the lions in this incredible animal kingdom. <laughs>